cat has been bugging me all day. I've been fighting her. I'm just gonna do the video with her here. Hello, and welcome to the second accident analysis video. As always, these accident videos are not about personally attacking the writer. It's simply about promoting honest dialogue about common writing mistakes. To start off again, my first problem with this video is the title. The title is, This is what happens when you break in a turn. This is general advice if you're gonna be posting a rec video that you put up on YouTube. Uh, get advice from somebody who's more experienced before you put a title on it. This is like having an itchy mole and walking into your doctor and diagnosing yourself with cancer before they've even been able to biopsy. So the title is misleading at best. The advice of not breaking in a turn is a good guideline, but like any rule, there's a time to break it. The reality is this biker could have utilized their brakes in this turn and not wrecked. It also ignores the fact of why this biker felt that they needed to apply the brake in this turn. Before we get into that, we kind of need to do an intro to motorcycle physics course. Fair warning, I'm no mathematician or physics expert. I'm just a dummy who edits videos and rides a motorcycle. So I'm gonna simplify a lot of the physics concepts. I'm probably not gonna use perfect terminology. I just wanna get the basics of my point across. There's a lot of really interesting explanations of motorcycle physics. I'll link a couple here. I found them very interesting. So when you're riding your bike, you have three main forces exerting on you. First, you have forward motion. This comes from your wheel propelling you forward, as well as the gyroscopic forces from the wheel spinning. The faster you go, the more stable your bike is, as there are more forces pushing you forward. This is why after a sick wheelie that you land with your tire angled at 20 degrees left or right, it simply straightens out as soon as you hit the pavement. Second, you have gravity, which pulls you down at a constant rate. The final force is when you're in a corner. That's centrifugal force. This force pushes you out of the turn, which is why you must lean into the turn. Otherwise, your bike would high side. So when you're leaning into a turn, you achieve an equilibrium between these three forces. So what happens when you apply brakes in this situation? You reduce that forward momentum, which reduces stability and the lean angle required to maintain equilibrium. If you're inside a turn and need to brake, this is doable, but to prevent what happened in this video, you would gently and consistently apply the brakes while returning to an upright position to maintain equilibrium. In this rider's case, they applied the front brake severely and quickly. We can see in the rear view mirror, the rider's hand position suddenly changed to grasp their brake. In my assessment, they did this because they started to drift to the outside of the corner because their lean angle was not aggressive enough to compensate for the centrifugal forces. The rider applies heavy front brake. This causes reduced stability from the forward momentum and gyroscopic forces pushing the bike forward. This reduction in speed also reduces the centrifugal forces that were pushing the bike up and to the left. Because we have rapid and uneven braking toward the front, the bike lurches forward. This pushes the center of mass to the front of the bike, which increases the traction demand from the front tire. When the force pushing the bike forward cannot overcome the loss of traction from the front tire, that's when the bike is overcome by the downward force of gravity on the center of mass, which causes the low side. Why did they do this? This turn isn't particularly aggressive, but the rider seems clearly scared to lean their bike into the turn any farther. So in a panic moment, as many inexperienced riders do, they quickly and aggressively hit the front brake. The solution to this problem is that we must become comfortable leaning our bike, and we must know how to brake out of a turn. I'm going to show you three basic drills to get some reps in. Before doing this, you may want to invest in frame sliders for the very real possibility that you drop your bike while practicing. The first thing you need is you need somewhere to practice. I would suggest finding an empty lot. Schools are great for this, uh, although you'll need to obviously go after hours. Preferably you'll want to find a flat lot with uh, not a lot of gravel or rocks or other debris. In my case, I'm doing this on a weekday, so one of the only places that had an open lot was a strip club. Enhance. 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 At about 10 to 15 miles an hour, start to turn your bike in a circle. You want to slowly lean your bike. As you're doing it, practice good turning behavior. Look through the turn. To where you're trying to go. Focus on looking through the turn to the location you're going. This will assist you in maintaining the correct angle through the turn, as well as the human body tends to just go wherever it's looking. As you get comfortable, slowly increase your speed and lean angle. As you increase speed, tighten the circle. Try to maintain a consistent angle and consistent throttle. And don't forget to switch sides. The next drill is trying to do a precise turn. Set up an obstacle, but something that you can hit and not be a big deal, like a cone. Do the same turn, but this time, try to get as close to the object at the apex of your turn. As with the circle, 
start slow, and increase speed and turn angle, all while staying as close to the object as possible. You should be going the fastest and most aggressive at the apex. Finally, incorporate these two drills into a figure eight. It helps to have two cones to use as curve targets. Start in the upright position. Increase speed and make a tight turn. Going out of the turn, evenly apply front and rear brakes while decreasing your lane angle. You don't need to come to a complete stop, but you can and probably should at least a couple times. As you come out of the turn, assess the next one and accelerate through. Rinse and repeat, increasing your speed and turning angle. You will be surprised how much effort it takes to do this and how tired you are after these exercises. Your key emergency maneuver here, if you start to low side, increase your speed. Be careful about doing it too quickly, otherwise your rear tire may lose traction. Then reduce your lean angle. After the apex, gently and evenly brake while returning to the upright position. The three lessons from this video. Learn to lean your bike and practice. If you must reduce speed in the corner, do it gently and consistently. Learn some basic motorcycle physics. There's a lot of interesting videos out there. That's the end of the main topic for this video. I'd like to introduce a new section called follow-up. I'd just like to highlight some of the commentary on my previous videos and respond to it. I'm putting it at the end for the people that do not like long videos. I'm not one of those people. I listen to like 35 hours of podcasts a week. All right, first up, this is from a Reddit user. Practical safety advice? Check out the big tentacles on this guy. Look, I get these videos are a little different from the typical stuff on CRT. Being a squid to me is more about personal tolerance for risk. Helping out other riders does not exclude you from riding like a squid yourself. In reference to my previous accident analysis video, okay, so this user is quoting another user. I only have one nitpicky thing. And then this user's statement, me too, but it's the fact that this SUV is an Escalade and not a Tahoe. I hate getting small details like that wrong. I leave that video up only as a reminder that I do not believe myself to be completely infallible. If you like this video, uh, upvote it. I use the upvotes as kind of data points to see what people have an appetite for as far as content. If you want to help me get a custom URL for my channel, then subscribe. YouTube has some minimum subscriber counts for this feature uh, and a couple of other features. So the more subscribers I get, the more I have access to those little features that I want to use. Until next time, ride fast, take chances. <laughs>